We often hear the idiom, necessity is the mother of innovation. For us at CARD MRI, it is literally mothers who inspire us to find new ways of improving our products and services. The entrepreneurial nanas have always been our source of inspiration, beginning when we started our journey of innovation to eradicate poverty in 1986. My story began way back about 40 years ago, when I was still very young and very handsome at that time. And I started this organization with 20 pesos and a magic typewriter. Yun siya, oh. Hindi na namin makuha yung 20 pesos. The typewriter, we found it already. My vision is to establish a bank that is owned and managed by the poor people in this country. That was a very crazy idea. People laugh at me. But for me, this is my passion. And today, CARD, with its humble beginning, has grown into 25 mutually reinforcing institutions across the country, serving 9 million families in this country and ensuring 27 million lives. This is about 25% of the entire population of the country, and these are the poor people. Beyond microfinance, we now have three banks, three microinsurance companies, a pharmacist, a school, a marketing company, and a publishing house, and IT companies, and many more. Yan po yung aming uh, intergalactical uh, card MRI, and dami. All towards eradicating poverty in this country. Now, the question is, how do we create innovation for our institution, for the clients that we serve? Let me share you my, our story of this. First, we listen to our clients. Napaka-importante dito na makinig sa ating mga kliyente. CARD is a client centricity. Client centricity has always been one of our hallmarks. We consider the nanas not as passive recipient of services, but our reason for being. They participate in almost aspect of operation from product design marketing, management, and governance. Our microinsurance is 100% owned by the members. Card Bank, the first microfinance-oriented bank, licensed by the Central Bank of the Philippines, is substantially owned by our members. My vision is to give them ownership because for me, poor people are poor not only because they don't have access, or if they have access, they don't have control of these resources. To me, this is what empowerment is all about. Give them the ownership. Don't just give them access. I'm sure Mr. Bautista will agree with me, my friend from Union Bank. Umuutang din ako sa And this is really the, the very essence of what empowerment is all about. Naturally, Every product and service we develop aims to meet our clients' ever-changing need. Listening to our clients is, is institutionalized at CARD MRI. We innovate because we have realized that our members' lives improve, their, their needs also change. Number two, our approach is a balance of heart and science. Maybe we can show the next slide. As we journey to the far corners of the country, where the poorest countries live, we gain deeper understanding of our clients. We deep dive the technology and data science into the needs and preferences of our clients so that we can help them in an informed decision, favorable for them. Our digital transformation has not given us only clients better products and easier access of services. It enabled us to focus most of the underserved areas and exponentially grow our out outreach. Digitalization has helped us push financial inclusion for the poor and the vulnerable. 
While it's important to be financial, financially sustainable, we also focus on social impact. This is very important to us because we continue to fine tune our business model so that we can transform the, the transformative impact to our clients. Number three, we develop and share best practices. Hindi po kami madamot. Lahat po ng technology na meron kami, ibinibigay kong lahat. And my board were saying to me, Dr. Alib, bakit sa mga competitor binibigay mo? Because our business is poverty eradication. The more institution, the more people we help, the better it is for our country. I take pride that CARD MRI is not just a pioneer and recognized in the lead, as a leader in microfinance. We continue to expand our footprint. Ito po naman yung contribution namin sa Asia para naman si Chairman Aquino'y matuwa-tuwa din naman. Meron po kaming office sa Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, and Indonesia. At we continue to share our technology and we send our people there. Not as OFW, but OFO, Overseas Filipino Officers. Bagong term. We have no stones unturned to deliver top-notch products and services to our clients. We actively engage with international organizations and industry leaders to share valuable insights. For example, in our core business, natuto rin ako sa Grameen Bank at saka sa ASA methodology in Bangladesh and in India, but we tailor-fitted all this technology, innovated it, adapted it within the context of the Filipino. We share our best practices with the goal of eradicating poverty. As early as 1980, as the 90s, we opened our training center, now a recognized educational institution known as CMDI, to train not just our clients, but also the staff and officers of microfinance institution. By sharing what we know, the impact we create widens and ripples to more families and communities. Number four, we pursue digitalization while addressing digital divide. Kaya ako ay natutuwang makinig din kay Chairman Aquino, ang dami na niyang innovation. Ganun din po ang ginagawa namin sa grassroots organization. One of our proudest accomplishments and pioneering feat in microfinance industry is the launch of Connect to Card. Ang dami niyan, no? So, meron po kaming application. It's a mobile application that empowers our client to conduct simple banking transaction using their Android points. Ganun din ang ginagawa nila, Mr. Bautista, eh. Kami eh, nangungopya din paminsan-minsan. Sana'y mangopya din naman kayo sa amin paminsan-minsan so that we can go to more deeper poverty eradication. We did this even before the COVID-19 pandemic in 2017, at a time when mobile banking applications were only available to the privileged few. Malakas ang loob ko, so we pushed for this, we invested innovation, dedicating a lot of energy and even our resources. Because we wanted to ensure that everyone, particularly the poor and the disadvantaged, will be able to access the much needed financial services anytime, anywhere. We met a lot of challenges. Hindi po madaling magbigay ng mga bagong technology at ituro sa mga nanay. Ang katunayan nito, ipinagdadasal pa si Dr. Alip sa simbahan. Wag na po na sanang ituloy ni Dr. Alip yung masama niyang tangkang gamitin itong mobile technology. Kasi mahirap gawin yan. Today, we have over 3.5 million nanays who are doing Connect to Card and they're very happy. Sila pa nga ang nagtuturo dun sa mga Gen X, sa mga millennials, ganito ang paggamit. So if you're able to give them the opportunity to learn, the nana is even 60 or 65 years old, defies this kind of logic. They are going to do it for as long as they become user-friendly. Number five, we break barriers 
and open frontiers. We go where others dare not to go. Card Bank is the first microfinance-oriented bank in this country. We defy the conventional banking wisdom. Where there is collateral, we say no need for collateral. Where there are kilos and kilos of documents, we say, and I say, one document is enough, one page, we will give you the loan. In one day, we give you the loan. That's how we defy the traditional banking system. Wag sana magagalit sa akin si Mr. Bautista. Na magkaibigan po naman tayo. Mas malaki po yung pinapautang nyo, kami naman maliit laang. Kaya okay lang po sa inyo. Many of our initiatives have transformed the, the, the Philippine microfinance and insurance industry. We were the first microinsurance company that was licensed by the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Insurance Commission. Already, we are going beyond the connect to card mobile application. We have developed the K Plus, a mobile e-wallet application that we intend to offer to the clients, to those who want to push digitalization in microfinance. Through this, we hope to bridge not just the gap in financial access, but also access to technology in the underserved community. Today, I'm also very proud to announce to you, by next year, we will be the first microfinance-oriented rural bank in this country to offer Sharia banking to our Muslim communities, to our brothers and sisters. Because yung pong traditional banking sa kanila ay haram, hindi pwede. But if we are talking of inclusivity, we need to include our Muslim brothers and sisters. So, meron na po kaming uh, ilo-launch by January yung Sharia branch ng card. And to conclude, I want to borrow a phrase from the young people uh, that they use today. Malayo pa, pero malayo na. Still a long way to go, but already have come so far. This phrase aptly describes our quest to eradicate poverty for our almost four decades of work. We have made strides in improving lives one client at a time. We have come a long way, reaching more than 9 million clients, and we will be reaching 12 million clients by the conclusion of this year. Our mission remains at a distance horizon. Still, we are grateful. Malayo pa ang aming lalakbayin, pero malayo pa rin ang aming nararating. And this award, Manspeed, Mr. Josiah, Mrs. Josiah Go, maraming maraming pong salamat for this journey. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. How much is the, the microfinance loan so they just know? What, what, how small and how large can they actually uh, borrow from card? Uh, we have three banks. No? They start with the microfinance bank uh, in the urban area. They can borrow up to 300,000. Uh, in the uh, urban area, uh, we have another bank. They can borrow up to half a million. And then we have uh, those who graduate from microfinance. There is life after microfinance. They move to become SME. So we have a trip bank, and we can offer them 1 million, 5 million, up to 10 million pesos. And then the smallest amount that you lend, what's the smallest amount? Oh, the smallest is about 1,000 pesos. I see. And sir, just, just so people get, get a better understanding, because we understand the traditional banking system, but when you do microfinancing, um, from what I understand, but there's, there's also, you use both no collateral and peer pressure as, as a way to, for people to, to enforce the, the payment of the loan. Can you help us better appreciate so yeah. for those people who don't understand? Too yeah, well? uh, for uh, microfinance, uh, we don't uh, require collateral. Mm -hmm. No. There is peer pressure, but the peer pressure, we have evolved this from the Filipino culture. Alam nyo mga Pilipino, pag dating sa utangan, sa umpisa, they will contribute. Pag maliit, no? Uh -oh. Pag lumaki na hindi na magko-contribute. So we have evolved another methodology. Utang mo, bayad mo. But of course, uh, the group, uh, the community will try to help, but they will not pay for the, for the members who, who are not able to pay we will uh, give the responsibility to the family. Sir, I, I know that the microfinancing business model, 
did not, well, maybe did not originate. There are many different countries that have done it. But you know, what I'm very interested to find out, especially for CART MRI, we're talking about mass bit innovation. What innovations did you have to do to make microfinancing, I guess, sustainable and, and scalable here in the Philippines versus uh, other countries? Well, because uh, we have a very standardized system, one account officer should be able to handle 300 to 350 clients. Wow. Uh, this is organized through center, center meeting. One center is about 30 to 50 members. So in one week, an account officer is able to handle about 10 to 15 centers. That's about uh, 300 to 450. So every day, he meets two to three centers. And this is very organized. Meetings are only done in the morning. I see. As you said, you're afraid of the many things you're talking about, right? Yeah, be, be, because uh, I have learned the, 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 the management principles. Because, you know, there's span of control. Why 30? Why not uh, 100? Because of the span of control. Because the center is your basic unit mm -hmm. of, the, of uh, development. If you go beyond the 30 members or maximum 50, it's uncontrollable. And then that's why the meetings are done on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and uh, two to three centers per week. Uh, two to three centers per day, ang account officer. And the other things that I'm also very interested in what you're doing, it's, it's, it's for me, it's counterintuitive. And I'm sure it's, it's also very important. But, you know, I find it a bit uh, daunting, especially in the financial world. You say, you tread or you break barriers by going where nobody else goes. Oh, yes, right? yes. And you lend to who people didn't think you, you could lend to. Or you also, at the same time, you, you, uh, you do what people don't when it comes to paperwork. How exactly do you, how did you bring about, I mean, to get to that innovation, it takes a process to get there. But what insight did you gain by going into uh, areas where people don't go into? You see, uh, these are people who are not, uh, who does not have access to the banks. Mm -hmm. And I said, these are the people that we, really, that we really, really should really help. So instead of uh, yung, uh, other banks are just, located in their uh, offices are located in the urban and suburban areas. We go to the countryside. Uh, we build or we establish our branch and units right there at the village level. It's really going to the village level. So we're very near the people. Unlike, so they don't have to go to the cities or the urban area. We go right there. So sort of really understanding the client by being where the client yeah. literally is. And even our staff are staying in the village. I see, I see. Yeah, because you get to understand them, you know them very well. That's why we have 9.1 million, now it's about 9.2 million uh, clients now. We know them by faces, by places, and all their addresses. I, 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 hope you can, I hope you don't mind me asking this question, because sometimes uh, many traditional businesses, or even you know, banks, uh, try to, not shun, but you know, they, they try to avoid looking at that sector as, as, a, as a viable uh, business uh, uh, the demographic where they would like to invest their time and their money. But if you're here to share right now, what are some of the, I guess, maybe some of the misconceptions that, that people might have about doing business with the impoverished sector, which actually uh, they, should, I should, they should change their mindset about because there's actually a big, uh, it's well, actually a, a, a well, bit Well, the mindset before is that if you're poor, uh, you, you're not credit worthy. And that's where I challenge always. Because if you're poor, the more I will give you loan. Because I think they, you just give them that, dig, bring back that dignity to them and uh, give them the, uh, assure them and make them confident that they'll be able to do business. I, I think uh, that's enough. When you, when you do that one, so I'm, I'm wearing my, sort of my businessman's hat. No? When you do loan them money, is there also a component where, you, where there's a sort of financial or educational or business literacy to make sure that what they're using the money for is uh -oh. used in the correct uh -oh. way? Is uh -oh. it, it's good. How do they pay back? Yeah, important. Before we give them loan, we have these uh, uh, meetings and then we educate them the importance of credit discipline, the importance of savings, the importance of uh, paying loans on time. 
So we, that's also part of our uh, education process. God, that's right. It, again, no, it mirrors again the same thing we've been learning about throughout this whole discussion, which we're seeing is that it's not always the product offering, it's also the social offering as well, where you have oh, to yeah. have the educational yeah. component of, of educating the people. Yeah. Um, that's why we meet them every week. Uh, there's this center meeting, the 30 to 50 people, wherein we meet for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes and uh, that's where we do education. You cannot go beyond an hour because they get so bored. No? Mm -hmm. Ang uh, capacity ng ating mga nanay, siyempre maglilinger na yan pagka sobra na. Marami nang iniisip yan. Help me better appreciate, sir, because you have a unique perspective that, that many of us see. Just how big is the business opportunity to eradicate? I mean, it, sounds, it doesn't sound well, but how big is just the business opportunity to work on poverty eradication? Oh, it's a great opportunity. We have millions of uh, Filipinos here that, that needs uh, access to credit. No, uh, ako maramit sa, no? Our financial institutions are very sustainable and our profitability is quite good. Well, the only difference is that when we, ever, when we get profit, this is plowed back to the community because they're part owner of our, of our banks. And if that's the case, sir, I mean, like for many of us, the goal of the business, especially with these innovative products that you have, is to scale it very, you know, oh, yeah. scale it uh, exponentially. How do you scale now the microfinancing and the microbanking institutions? We're using also our Connect to Card. We're now digitalized. But as I was sharing, it's not enough to do digital. It's mm -hmm. not enough just to use mobile phone and digital banking. This is just a means. Mm -hmm. This is just a tool. You still have to do person-to-person. Uh, uh, -person. You have to relate with them, so you have to work with them face-to-face. -face. And in terms of um, moving, moving forward with this one, uh, what would you like to... How would you like, I mean, this is a great opportunity because as I, as I look around here, uh, you have people from the SEC who can help formalize the business. You have people like Union Bank that you can work with. Um, you have people like Aid Fee who can actually uh, use your services. What would you like to share with them as people want to, I guess, collaborate with you in, in growing, in helping you improve the product innovation of, of your services? Well, of course, uh, the, to my colleagues, uh, I think it's important really to collaborate uh, with Union Bank, nangungutang na ako sa Union Bank. That's very clear. With SEC, we're very happy that uh, you're very efficient in the reports. When we, uh, uh, when we apply for new uh, registration, very easy and very quick. To Mr. Auke, my friend from the Magsaysay Award, uh, is also a Magsaysay Awardee, we will tap your technology. And I like uh, the presentation of our young... Uh, KRR, si Ralph, uh, si, oh, oh, Because... I want to access your product also. You know why? Because we also have pharmacies. We have pharmacy store. We have 20. And we will be expanding this. So maybe, bigyan mo lang malaking discount. Perfect place to ask. Perfect place to ask. May mga discount. And then, uh, Jimmy also, I, I think we can work together also. Because you're, you're in a number of these uh, different kinds of product. I will be very happy to share with you. We have Likani Inay. Uh, that also distribute the products of our clients. I think we can work together. There's synergy among us. That's right. There's synergy among innovators. And last question, sir, if you don't mind. Uh, when it comes to digital transformation, we've talked about digital transformation, but the other part that we're seeing always now, aside from digital transformation, is the buy-in of the consumer. What, especially your, your nanas and your ano, and we've seen that even from the example of Mr. Aquino, kahit sa kanilang ano, may resistance yan, there are institutional barriers. What have you learned about, you know, making sure that as you do digital transformation or innovation, that it is also something that is acceptable to your, to your main client? Actually, ang unang resistance, yung mga staff. Staff mo, oh, same, mga, same kind of thing, no? Yan talaga, yan ang, yan ang ano eh. So you have, the leadership should, should be very strong, no? And you have to create that uh, environment wherein they really share the technology. Kasi yung mga kasama kong nagsimula, mga, ang generation namin, baby boomers. So we're, we're very... Trapo kami, very traditional. So when I saw that, you know, the millennials, the Gen Z, the Gen X are very good in innovation. Sila ang itinap ko. We created our own innovation hub unit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that innovation hub unit, sa akin lang yun. No? 
gawin yung lahat yung gusto nyong gawin, wala makikilam sa inyo, once you have something, then we bring it into the system, and then we make sure that everybody understood what you're doing. That's the first uh, hurdle. The second hurdle will be the clients. No? The clients, because uh, many of them are also 50 years old and above, 40 years old, they don't like to have this technology. Mahirap sa kanila. Uh, but through education, concept, uh, education, I was sharing this to Mrs. Go, that, you know, this uh, constant uh, and uh, always this continuing education to the nana is very important. So today, wala na akong problema. Sila pa ngayon nag encourage We now have about 3.5 out of the 9 million that are already in ours digital. Uh, why only 3.5? Because in the areas where we're operating, wala pang mga... Wala cell phone signal Wala pa. pang signal siguro eh. Wala pang signal. But uh, we're coming up with another technology. We're working with another company. Kahit walang signal, it can also be done. And again, maraming salamat. Congratulations. Maraming salamat, Dr. Aris Alep, for all the good work that you do for the country. Again, Aris Alep of CARD MRI.